Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the Weierstrass M-Test. The Weierstrass M-Test is a classical result but it's very useful in looking at series of functions. It says suppose that Fn map an interval AB into R. It doesn't have to be an interval AB, it can be any set, but this is just for simplicity. Is a sequence of functions such that fn of x is less than or equal to some numbers mn, hence the name m-test, right? But they don't want to be m's. Um, for all x in ab, okay? In other words, each individual function fn is bounded by a number mn, okay? So this mn can change from function to function, okay? With, if the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of mn converges, so if these non-negative numbers mn converge, then the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of f n of x converges uniformly. On a, b. Now this is very useful because in particular, so let's for, the proof is actually straightforward, so let's do it, right? So what we're going to do is the following. So let's consider these partial sums over here. So let's look at Sn. Sn, here's the proof. Sn, capital, say Sn capital, is just going to be the sum. Little n goes from 1 to n capital of Fn of x. Okay. Of x. Then... Let epsilon be greater than zero, and pick pick n capital in n, such that if n and m are bigger than or equal to n capital, we have this we have this result over here that the sum j goes from um, such that what such as the sum of the, the this is convergent right so the sum from m up to n of mj is less than epsilon, okay? In other words, we know that this, the partial sums from our Cauchy sequence, so in other words, I can make this less than epsilon provided that mn and n are larger than some number n, right? Now what we can do is the following, so let's estimate Sn, let's consider Sn minus Sm, right, for these partial sums over here, under the condition that n and m are bigger than or equal to n. Well, what is this? This is gonna be less than or equal to the sum by the triangle inequality, j goes from m, and I'm going to assume here that n, of course, is bigger than m, just so this makes sense. m goes from m up to n of the absolute value of fj of x, and that's less than or equal to, by assumption, the sum j goes from m up to n of just these mj's, and that's less than epsilon. So we've just shown that the partial sums of this thing, and this is true for any x, right? So the partial sums, we have a Cauchy sequence, therefore our sum converges uniformly. So the sum, hence the sum, j goes from 1 to infinity of fj of x converges uniformly by the Cauchy criterion. Okay, easy enough, right? So the proof is actually fairly short. It just follows from the fact that your partial sums are majorized by a convergence series. Since you're majorized by a convergence series, you get a uniform Cauchy estimate, and that proves the uniform convergence. Now, this is a very powerful tool, as I alluded to earlier, because what we get is we know the fact that if I have a sequence of continuous functions that converge uniformly, the limit has to be continuous. In other words, if Fn are continuous, are continuous functions on the interval a, b, and Fn converges uniformly, on a, b, then we know that f itself is a continuous function on a, b. Okay, so in other words, the uniform limit of continuous functions is a continuous function. So this oftentimes helps us for something like the Weierstrass test. So how can the Weierstrass test help us? So here's an example. Okay. What's the example? So let's consider this series over here. It's going to be the sum, n goes from 1 to infinity, of 2 to the power of negative n cosine 
of 2 to the power n x. So this is a highly oscillatory, each individual term as n gets very, very large, you have a cosine of a humongous power of 2, right? So if I plug in, for example, if I plug in uh, 7 and get 64 over here, so nor, or if I plug in, yeah, so if I plug in, like, let's say, so if I plug in n equals 5, I get 32, plug in n equals 6, I get 64. If I have cosine of 64x, that oscillates a tremendous number of times between 0 and 2 pi, right? So these are highly oscillatory things. But the modulus of the cosine are less than or equal to 1, right? So I know that these functions over here, if we call these functions over here our fn, our fn, then I know that fn of x is less than or equal to 2 to the power of negative n, because the biggest that cosine can be is just 1, right? And I know that this is a convergent series. We know that this sum over here, n goes from 1 to infinity of 2 to the power of negative n, is convergent. Therefore, and each of these individual functions are continuous. So each individual, so all these fn are continuous functions. So these are continuous functions. So I have, by the Weierstrass m test, this function over here, let's call this function over here, g of x, g of x converges uniformly, right? And g of x is continuous. Okay, it's continuous actually in all of R, right? On all of R. Now, of course, the interesting thing about this function is that this function, while this function is continuous over here on all of R, it's you can show, and we'll show in later in videos, that this function over here is in fact nowhere differentiable. You can sort of get a rough sense of that just by doing the formal derivative. If I was to formally differentiate this, what would happen? This 2 to the power of negative n would stay put. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so I have a negative sine over here of 2 to the power n x, and then I have a 2 to the power n that comes out. So then the, the formal derivative of this is the sum from 1 to infinity of negative sine of 2 to the power n x. And there's so much oscillation over there, it's just a pure alternating series. There's so much oscillation that I expect that the derivative of that will exist at no point. So this is an example of a continuous function, which is nowhere differentiable. We'll prove the nowhere differentiability of this function in a different video. Thank you very much.